and we should start. Well, hello, it's it too. Wonderful to see you again. <sighs> Sorry, I'm keeping you up way past your bedtime. Um, so it's seven o'clock, and it's time for episode forty-one. Oh my gosh, of Unhindered by Coding, um, uh, where I, Nick McPhee, program and flail, and you help me because you're awesome people. Um, and it's clearly going to be getting darker and darker as we the days get shorter. And I don't have awesome night light in here for my face. I have to do something about that, but not going to worry about it today. Um, so uh, we'll be working on the evolution of computation in Rust um, issue. Uh, for at least part of tonight, I don't know, it might not be all of tonight, we might actually drift into actually some closure code and getting to a point where we can do some actual timing comparisons between the two uh, languages, um, hopefully with comparable implementations of the same basic ideas. Um, I think we've got most of an evolutionary computation, simple genetic algorithm system, implemented it in Rust at this point. And uh, fingers crossed, we can maybe wrap that up and then work on having something comparable in Clojure so we can do some timing studies. Uh, <clears throat> my Some early timing studies before I had uh, a very clear, a very complete version of a GA in either language um, had Rust running literally about 100 times faster than closure and but that was a very simplified subset of a system it's really just the construction and scoring of random populations so i i think it'll be interesting to see what happens when we actually have a full-on system with mutation and crossover and selection and all this stuff um one thing i want to do is and this, I think, will be the last thing that's sort of necessary in the rough side. Um, although I would like to continue to do this after um, we get the initial timing done. Well, if the initial timing is still interesting, like if there's still at least a factor of 10 um, uh, improvement for Rust, then I actually want to actually build this out to a genetic programming system where we evolve computer programs instead of evolving bit strings. And uh, because those are actually much more time consuming to uh, run. And uh, I would really like to see what Rust does there. Um, if Rust, if for some weird reason, and I don't see this happening, but if for some weird reason Rust ended up being kind of a tie with closure, on the GA then I might think about it some before I put a lot of effort into building out the genetic programming system, but I don't really think that's gonna happen. So I think we'll try to implement Lexcase selection tonight, um, see if we get that working. If that works, then we'll look at, I've got some starter closure code I wrote back over the summer and but it's missing a bunch of pieces again i think it just got as far as implementing the construction of an initial population and we have a lot of stuff going in the closure in the rust side of things that isn't there um so i'd like to sort of have a more comparable apples to apples pair of systems uh and then do some timing stuff so that's the hope now before we get to the lexa case um I did some stuff offline. Um, so we spent some time on, let's see, I don't really need that. I don't need that. And I don't need that. I don't need that. We spent some time last week. Um, modifying individual so that it had a total score and a vector of errors or scores. And so the idea is you've got, for a lot of problems, you have a collection of tests. You could think of them as being like unit tests in 
um, software engineering. Um, and you have a score on each of these individual tests. And historically, most evolutionary computation through at least to the early 2000s um, generated a single score by adding up all of the scores on the individual tests, which is not unlike if you were taking an exam, and I apologize if this leads to flashbacks for some of you, um, and let's say the exam's got 100 problems on it, um, and you could get up to four problem points on each problem, um, you would have a total score on the exam that was the sum of your score on each of those 100 individual problems. Um, but that total throws away a lot of information. So it might turn out that you were good on part two of the exam, but really struggled on part three of the exam. And maybe I really struggled on part two, but was pretty strong on part three. And we end up with the same score, but it doesn't say the same thing about how we, our understanding of the material or our ability to do the problems that are on the exam. And so uh, a colleague of mine, Lee Spector, um, and some of his students some years ago proposed this idea of lexicase selection. And a central part of it is that you keep the individual errors or scores separate instead of combining them into a total. So, so we'll still have a total score. That's a useful thing for like printing and stuff like that. Um, but we will um, also keep them as a vector of scores so that uh, we can uh, do selection in a way that recognizes the strengths and weaknesses of different approaches instead of just jumbling them all together. And to go back to the exam analogy, um, if, uh, if you and I have the same score, but we got it by being strong in different parts of the exam, you could say, well, you know, they both had the same score. Let's just get rid of Nick and we'll take you. You'll be, you're on the team, but Nick is not on the team. But if it turns out that we actually, like you were good at part two and I, I was good at part three, maybe you want both of us on the team so that together we're better than either one of us separately. Um, and so we've got selection mechanisms and that's what Lexicase is about. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, where the intent is that you keep all the scores separate like this so that you can do more nuanced selections when creating parents. So that's the idea. So it complicates things. And so we went through last week and we did all this Lexicase stuff. Or actually, we didn't do Lexicase. We just generated um, the scores vectors. Um, and implemented that in a um, uh, little like in display. I just saw display go by. Okay, display, we print out all of the scores, for example, as well as the total score. So we added all this stuff so that we support these uh, multi-valued score vectors. Um, now, one, we, we did it um, but we didn't have a, um, I don't think we had a, a problem. Uh, oh, maybe we did do count ones. Um, because count ones was pretty easy. We could just say the score, you could think of each position as being an individual test case. So count ones, you're trying to maximize the number of ones. So you can think of each of the, say, 128 positions as being a, an exam question, and you either get it right or wrong. You're a one or you're not. And so we took the bits and we mapped those Booleans to ones or zeros and collected them together. And that gave us a vector of integers um, which we could use as the uh, vector of scores here. 
Um, and so that actually did a swell thing. Um, and we can see that run. Let's see. Uh, cargo run minus minus run module. I'm going to say serial. If I run parallel, then it spins up all of my cores, and I think it uh, is more likely to interfere with Twitch's streaming stuff. Um, and let's just do 100 generations, and we'll do 1,000 individuals, and we'll do 10, 128 bits, and we'll say count ones. So we hopefully will see um, stuff happen. We um so yeah and it's worth noting okay let me scroll back a little bit sorry for the scrolling we got perfect pretty quickly um so generation 28 we had a perfect individual that was all 128 ones and that was not happening before actually before we separated things out um, no, no, that, this has, we have, until we do Lex case, nothing's really changed here. So it just, we're keeping track of it separately. Um, so it must have actually still been able to do this before. Um, uh, cause I think without, so far we don't have any selection that would, uh, care. I think the reason it's doing better is actually more to do with, um, let's see, I want lib. Um, more to do with having um, a more sophisticated set of selection actions. So we're taking sort of 5% of our in population, our 5% of our parents are the best individual or somebody who was tied for best individual in the previous generation. 20% are just chosen entirely at random. 50% are selected with binary tournament and 25% are selected with tournament of size 10. I think that's actually why it's doing better there. So, okay, we're not gonna worry about that. Um, but then there's this other problem, HIF, and I needed it to, to modify it so it returned a vector of integers. And that's something I did offline last week um, and uh, actually played with uh, a number of ways of implementing it. And there's like, this crazy bit of commented out code um, that uh, is sort of a record of that. And the, the thing with HIF is there's an inherently recursive approach to HIF. Um, so with HIF, this is stands for hierarchical, hierarchical if and only if, um, you get every bit gets one point for just being a bit. Like that's just totally boring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Then you look at pairs, adjacent pairs, and a pair gets two points if both bits in the pair are the same. So we get two points here. Um, here, let's make this bigger. Then um, you get two points for these two being the same. You get two points for these two being the same. You get two points for these two. You get two points for these two. Turns out you won't get any points downstream. So these are different, so and these are different, and these are different, and these are different. So this would all be zeros going forward. And then you you look at groups of four, and you get four points if everybody's the same in that group of four. So here we get four points. Here we get zero points. We got we've gotten two for these, but the zeros and the ones don't match. So this group doesn't get four points. There's definitely not four points here or here. And then you look at groups of eight. And so the group of eight are not all the same. So they get a zero. And this group of eight are not all the same. So they get a zero. And then in this example, you would look at all 16. And if they're all the same, you get a 16. Otherwise, you get zero. Um, and so there's kind of an obvious recursive approach to this. Um, uh, you basically... If the whole thing is the same, then it gets, in this case, 16. Plus, then you split it into two groups of eight, and you recall it recursively on each group of eight. Um, and then each of those splits it up into two groups of four, and each of those splits it up into two groups of two. 
Um, and so there, and that's the recursive approach is how I had done it um, when we had a single score. Um, but when we needed to keep track of all the subscores, so um, I'm now instead of having just one big total, I want to actually keep track of all these ones and twos and fours and zeros or fours and eights and sixteens as a vector of values. And uh, that was more complicated with the recursion. Um, so one version of that was here um, where, uh, oh, actually, I think this is the one I first did. Um, no, actually, I think this is the one I first did, maybe. So I called HIF on the left half um, here. And that gave me a group of scores. And then I extended that with the scores I got by calling HIF on the right half. And then at the bottom, if all the bits in this slice were the same, then I push their length on um, as an additional score. Otherwise, I push the zero on and then I return the scores vector. Um, but this was actually reasonably slow. Um, and since I'm interested in timing studies, I didn't really want to have a version of HIF that was unnecessarily slow. And the issue was this extend or other versions of it, like this append here and this concat here, these were all different ways of doing the same basic idea. All of these ended up creating vectors and appending them which involve copying values over and possibly extending the memory for the thing being added to and so there's a lot of copying and there's a lot of memory management going on which i think ends up probably being something like order n squared um i think the repeated appending probably ends up being something like order n squared when you do that and so I faffed about for a while and ended up with a much faster approach, um, which computes how long the, the result vector needs to be, creates that result vector, and then does the recursion, passing in both the bits and the resulting score vector and so that and that's a mutable vector so all those uh all those do hif calls can write into that vector and then when it's done we can just return it and that avoids any of this um uh copying and memory allocation we do the memory allocation once um and it's probably roughly constant um i guess if num scores was really big it might get to be more linear or log in but for anything we're doing this is probably constant um, and then each call to do hif is linear in the length of the piece that it's dealing with um, and so I think that the whole thing behaves a lot faster that way um, so basically we figure out how long our slice is that we're responsible for um, if it's less than two so we have one bit then we push um uh hang on yeah yeah so we push this value on um and return true oh yeah we're, we're also of using um, returning a boolean here to indicate whether um, all of the bits in that slice were the same. Um, and so if the length is less than two, there's only one bit, it's clearly the same as itself. So we return true there. Now we compute half the length. We do the two recursive calls on the left half and the right half. Um, and each of these is going to add values to scores. 
um, because Scourge is mutable, so we can just be pushing stuff on there. And then after the and those both return booleans that are was everything on the left the same as itself and was everything on the right the same as itself. If the left was the same as itself and the right was the same as itself and the first bit, which would be the first bit in the left slice, equals the first bit in the right slice, then we know all the bits were the same because we know everything in the left half was the same as everything in the left half. Everything in the right half is the same as everything in the right half. And something in the left matches something in the right. So that just means they're all the same. So if that's true, then we put len on the score vector and return true because everything was the same. Otherwise, put zero and return false because everything wasn't the same. And that actually worked really fast. I was very happy with that. So that was kind of nifty. Um, and uh, questions, comments? I've been talking a lot, not programming. Okay, let's do lex case. Because I think if we have lex case, we can <clears throat> pretty much call this a uh, wrap. And that would be kind of cool. So, um, where do I have... Uh, so, popu population seems to have the selectors. Okay. Wasn't sure where my selectors had wandered off to. Um, so population, um, yeah. So we've got tournament selectors. So we would probably want to implement lex case in here. Um, so pub fun lexicase self. Um, and that'll return an option reference to individual of type T. Boom. Okay, so how does LexCase work? Um, and, you know, if you come up with a different way to have implemented HIF, uh, especially one that's, well, either easier to read or faster, um, easier to read and not a lot slower or faster than if it's a lot faster than just faster. Um, if it's only a little faster, then it, presumably it shouldn't make it too much more complicated. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, if you do think, think of something, definitely share. Um, and, uh, if you've got ideas, you know, feel free to share here. Um, but also if you think of something later or just have a question later, um, the discord invite, um, link is there. And also this QR code over on the left, um, joins the discord and I would be happy to have you, uh, join us and ask questions and share good ideas. So, so Lexicase. Um, Lexicase takes the, um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm sure, I, I mean, at, by some def, by, by some mathematical property, we certainly could do it without recursion, um, because anything you do with recursion, you could do without recursion and vice versa. But I do think it naturally, you know, has this recursive nature of splitting into halves. Um, and I don't think the function calls, the recursive function calls, I don't think they were really the issue. I do think the problem, and I did, uh, I did some criterion timing. Um, so I did some benchmarks. Um, uh, which I will not bore you with the details, but I did do some benchmarks with some different approaches. Um, and I found that um, the version that I had did work the best. Um, it was provided the best performance by a non-trivial margin. 
um, avoiding the the copying and the memory allocation, I think, was the real issue. Um, so, yay team. So, uh, in Lex's case, we're going to... Um, uh, shuffle the indices of the test cases. So you kind of think of it as shuffling the test cases, but we're actually going to shuffle the indices of the test cases. Um, and then um, for the first, um, well, let's say for each test case in turn, we will um, uh, oh, and X, I guess we should say uh, candidate set is initially the whole population. Um, for each test in turn, uh, find the best score of any individual still in the candidate set candidate set um, on that test case uh, remove uh, any individual from the candidate set that is worse than that best score on that test case. And you go until you get to a single individual, individual, or you run out of test cases. And so, in some ways, again, if we go back to the uh, exam idea, if you have a room full of people, you still, and, and let's say you've got, I don't know, a thousand people, and you want to keep 10. And you want to keep 10 in a way that you hope will provide a reasonable distribution of uh, competence across the whole exam. What we're saying here is we're going to pick one of the exam questions at random and we're going to say, okay, who did the best on this one? Maybe the best anybody did is three out of four points. So you say, we'll keep everybody that got at least three points. Everybody else, you leave the room. And maybe that was question 13. And then you pick another question at random and maybe that's like 82. And you see, okay, who did, of the people still in the room, not of everybody in the whole universe, um, but the people still in the room, who did the best on problem 82? And maybe the best anybody that's still in the room did on 82 is two points. And you're like, okay, anybody that got two, you get to stay. Anybody with zero or one, you're out. You can leave now. And you keep doing this, picking a problem at random, uh, deciding who among those that are left, who did the best on that one, and asking everybody else to leave. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I didn't mean to bring up, you know, bad history. Um, and uh, you, get, you go till you get to a single individual. Or if you get through all the exam questions and there are three people left, it means they tied on all the exam questions. They have the same score on all the exam questions. And you pick one of them at random and ask the other two to leave. Then you bring everybody else back in and start over, but with a different random order. And the idea is that if you keep doing this, every time, because you're randomizing the order every time, sometimes you'll get people that were good at this set of problems, but not so good at these other problems. Uh, and then other times you'll get a different group of people, people that were better at a different set of problems. Uh, and the hope is that you maintain diversity that way. Um, 
by shuffling the order every time. Uh, and so it's kind of complicated and weird to think about, but it's actually pretty nifty um, and uh, works quite well. Um, and in fact, I should be able to, because I was doing some timing studies. Um, did that? Oh, it did. That's annoying. I'll have to go back. Ignore all that stuff. We don't care. Um, but uh, here's an implementation of Lexicase selection in Clojure. Um, and actually, let's, um, let's look at this one because it's a little simpler. Um, and now if you don't know Clojure, this could be actually a total distraction. And if so, I apologize. Um, but um, hopefully this won't uh, be too weird. Um, so in Clojure, a loop is basically uh, a tail recursion. So it's a, a recursive structure. You have loop and then recur basically comes back up to the top of the loop. Um, and it's really just a hack because the JVM doesn't support tail recursion. And without tail recursion, recursion eats a lot of memory. Um, and you end up with stack overflow problems. Um, and so they introduced this loop recur construct enclosure as a way of getting around that. But we're, we have a lexicase selection function. It's taking a population as its argument. This loop is setting up two local variables. Survivors is initially just going to be the whole population and cases is going to be a shuffle, a randomization of uh, the indices of the errors. So you, you can ignore the details of how this works at the moment, but that if there were 100 errors, this would be the list 0 to 99. And so we're shuffling 0 to 99, and that's giving us our cases, um, our randomized list of cases. If cases is empty, we're done. Or if there's only one survivor, um, so rest of survivors would give you everything but the first element in that list or vector. Um, if that's empty, that means you only had one thing. So if either of those are true, then we will take a random element from survivors. Rand nth just takes a collection and randomly picks one and gives it to you. Um, so this, if this happens, we've basically got to the end. We might have a group of people that are tied. So we'll just take a random element of the set of survivors. Um, then here, this is finding the smallest. There, This is trying to minimize. In our system, we're actually trying to maximize. But in this system, they're trying to minimize. So this is finding the smallest error of anybody in survivors um, on the first test case in cases. And we don't need to worry about the details unless you've got questions. Um, and then this filter basically gets rid of everybody that doesn't have that score on the first test case. Um, and then recur brings us back up here where survivors is replaced by this filtered list, the shorter list, and cases is replaced by rest cases. Um, so we get rid of the first case and move on to whatever's happening after that. So that is the basic structure that we want to implement, but we want to do it in Rust. So I'm actually going to copy that and let's go back to uh, here. And actually I'm going to put as a big comment that closure code just so that we have it to look at in case I at least might find that useful. Now, one place where I think Rust might win, but I don't really know, is in Clojure, um, why are you fussing? Um, Oh, it's because I haven't done anything. And so it's um, to do bang. 
Here we go. Um, in Closure, they end up making all these lists. So Survivors ends up being a new list every time. And that means that they're actually consing together these shorter lists every time they go through. So there's a fair bit of list construction and all of that's got to be garbage collected. And I suspect that costs something. Um, what that costs, I don't know, but it's almost certainly going to have some kind of cost attached to it. And in Rust, well, we know we won't have garbage collection because there is no garbage collector. Um, and I feel like if we are careful, we can do this with iterators in a way that um, just keeps tacking iterators, filters on. So we'll, we'll have an iterator, we'll apply a filter to it that gives us a new iterator, we'll apply a filter to that, it gives us a new iterator. So we'll just keep applying filters to iterators and then at the end, we'll go, and what's left? Um, uh, and maybe it'll be cool. I don't know, but we're going to find out. So um, uh, so I'm thinking of doing this with iterators primarily. Um, but I am, again, open to suggestions. If people have got other ideas, that would be nifty. But I feel like iterators hopefully we'll do the thing that we need them to do. So I want, I first need to get the case numbers and create a shuffled version of them. So that's going to have to happen. So let case indices be, uh, oh, yeah. Um, now, what they do here is they take the first individual in the population, they get its error vector, and then they see how long it is, and then they build the range out of that. And I think that probably is a reasonable way to do it. Um, so, actually, if we do, um, let me actually... Not, let's not get here first. Uh, let's say first individual is going to be self dot um, individuals bracket zero. Um, and let, uh, so we need to get the errors. Um, Errors. It's going to be first individual dot scores. Oh, and I guess I, these should be called scores, not errors. Um, uh, scores and let num scores be first scores dot let boom. So that gives us how many scores there are. And so now we can get our, our case indices will be a range zero to num scores. Boom. So that's case indices. And we can shuffle those. I think we could do that. Right away, shuffle. No? Do I have to turn it into an iterator first? Nope, don't know. Let's go look. Um, what? what uh, come here. There we go. Um, not there. Over here. Thank you. Rust shuffle iterator. Or actually, shuffle range. 
Let's do it shuffle. Uh, oh, that's a separate crate. Oh. But there is... Rand Shuffle, which is really what I was thinking about, I think. But it was in Rand Shuffle. Uh... Oh, but why? Oh, you know, I bet Y needs to be mutable to be shuffleable. And I wonder if... Uh... And this also applies to Slices. And my range is not a slice, but it could be made one. Um, ah. So, yeah, what you're suggesting. So, we could say... Um, can I go to two slice here? Nope. May have to just collect. I wonder if I can get lucky... And shuffle took a thread earn G. Am I going to need any other random number generation in this? No. Um, or, no, I'm remembering the syntax wrong here. Okay, so I need to use this, and then it's just thread RNG. Um, do I have that? Uh, oh, I do. So I could just could have just said thread RNG. There we go. Does that do a thing, or is that going to shout at me? Probably. Not find this. Oh, it's Rand thread. Da, 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 da. I knew that. I knew that. Now this probably doesn't know what to collect into. Type annotations. Yeah, so I'd have to say what I want to collect into, or specify a type here, which would be a vac of. Uh, can I get away with that? No, probably have to say what these are. And that's going to be then a VEC of U size. Work? No, curses. Type, oh, so at this point, because it's too early, so I actually have to say what it's going to be. Foo. So I need a turbo fish. So colon, colon. Uh, you saw back you oh, what? oh ah, stop it go away um back you size do, 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 do. and now it's completely baffled oh no it's Yes, it's completely baffled. Why is it completely baffled? Um, oh, shuffle is in place. I can't do it this way, can I? Okay, so let's do the shuffle as a second step. I think that will... Um, and then this is going to have to be mute... Uh, and this, I probably then can get rid of the turbo fish here. That part will work. And then this will have case indices, uh, dot shuffle, all manner of weirdness there. Boom. Why are you grumpy? Oh, it's got. I've got to say, it's an and mute. Okay. Now, why are you grumpy up here? 
Oh, actually, I really want this to be a ref. Um, I don't want to move you out. And I don't want to move you out. Okay, that's all happy. That's actually a fairly gross little sequence of events. Um, and... I wonder if a population ought to just keep remember how many scores it has and then here we just look that up instead of recomputing this because we'll end up computing this for every selection event and there's going to be a lot of them so I'm going to make it to do I'm not going to deal with it right now but um, uh, compute this once when the population is initially constructed and then just look it up when necessary instead of recomputing it for every um, Selection. Boom. Okay. I think that would be an improvement. Okay, so now we have a shuffled sequence of indices um, and we can actually move on to the next piece. So, uh, so the candidates that mute candidates is going to be self.individuals.iter. Boom. So I'm going to have an iterator that's going to be over the current set of candidates, and that'll start being everybody. And then I'm going to loop through the case indices and I think I'll just do a for loop there because it'll make it easier to break out early if we get to a point where that makes sense although one disadvantage of an iterator is we can't tell if it's done or if we're, sorry, we can't easily tell if it's only going to have one thing without forcing it to go through to the end. We'd have to do collect or something um, to see if that iterator is, um, if we're down to just one individual. And here they check to see, hey, do we only have one individual left? And if we do, we end right away and don't do any more testing. Um, I think for the moment, I'm going to actually ignore that problem. I think we could use like a peekable iterator and look over the first individual. But if they were all the, had the same, if there were several that had the same error score vector, um, there wouldn't be a good way to know that. Um, so I think I'm just going to ignore that issue for now. And I think we'll just for loop over our cases. Um, so for uh, test case index in case indices. I have a house fly here that's very annoying. Um, so for each index, um, oh, but we're still going to have to go through the whole iterator to get the, the best score. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. And that's going to be a problem because that's going to eat the iterator. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. I think there is an, a min. Rust iterator min. Iterator. Uh, yeah, there's a max, there's a min. Oh, actually, we want max. Um, so we can max or max by or max by key. Um, but when we finish doing that, that iterator will be used up. So I think we need to clone this iterator. Um, so max score is going to be candidates dot clone. Can I clone an iterator? Apparently I can. Um, and I hope that will do the right thing. Um, and then I want max. Which of these do I want? Um, so there's max, max by takes a comparison function and max by key also takes a function. What's oh it's a comparison function. I don't really want that. I want a max by key. Um, and then the key is going to take an individual and give us the score on that test case. So max by key, and this is going to be, um, it's going to take an individual and it's going to return individual dot, uh, oh, it's going to, um, individual dot scores bracket test case and the index do 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 so we'll maximize by that and boop so that should give us the largest score on that test case and then we're going to want to say candidates gets um, candidates dot filter and we're going to want to keep everybody that has that score so individual um uh in dot scores test case index equals equals max score boom bop uh so it sounds like you figured out what you were confused about and this is complicated, and if I'm messing something up, I or I'm just not being clear. Um, uh, but the idea is that I want to get the the best score from the candidates on that test case, and then I'm going to replace candidates with the result of filtering. Um, so that we only get the people whose score on that test case is the best score. Um, and it's not happy. Why is it not happy? Um, whoops. Uh, mismatch types. Expected an iter and got a filter of a slice. Oh, come on. I thought filter returned an iterator and a 
filter thingy would be compatible, but maybe not. Um, oh, max score is broken. Maybe this is the problem. This is an opt option, and I don't want an option. Um, oh, and this is actually giving me an individual, and I don't want an individual either. So I actually want the score. Hmm. So this really is like unwrap dot scores test case index. Oh, unwrap takes parens. Um Oh, it's a different type. And since this wasn't a filter thingy, having this replace that might not work. Huh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, so a, a STD, come on. So an STD slice iter and a STD iter filter, blah, 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 aren't the same type, and so they might not have the same memory footprint. I get it. And. So, um, So the trick is, how would I convert this iter here into one of these filter iters? I could apply a bogus filter that doesn't actually do any filtering, but that seems to be a bad idea. Um, so standard iter filter. Let's go have a look. Um, Rust. Oh, actually, if I just back out to here, do I get lucky? Structs. Filter. Can I do? This is just going to be all the impl stuff for iterator, but it's not going to convert between them. And it's not even clear. Oh, the closure. Oh, that makes it even worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the closure becomes part of the type. And so every time through, I'm going to get actually a different type. Well, that's irksome. Interesting. 
Huh. So I couldn't actually, my idea of like, as a terrible hack, I mean, I really don't want to do this, but as a terrible hack, I couldn't actually do um, that because even though, oh, weird. Did it like realize that it didn't, this didn't do anything? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. But I, don't, I, I, I would have thought this type would have changed. Uh, is the system just being too clever? You'd have to do a box dine iterator. Well, I mean, I guess we can do that. Um, and maybe that's just the thing that needs to be done. And I've never, I, up till now, I've never actually done a box anything. Um, so... So I want mute candidates to be of type box dine iterator. And then this needs to be put in a box. So I need to say box new. Okay. Didn't like this. Oh, I've got to say what the item type is. Item equals individual. Boom. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, type, individual type T. Okay. Now we're grumpy here. Why are we grumpy here? Uh, oh, it's references. So this is actually a reference an iterator of references to individuals. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. So that's a thing. Now, this is grumpy because I can't clone it. Oh, curses. Um, okay. So box is basically a pointer out into memory and I can't clone a box. Can I copy a box? Is that the same? Let's see. The method clone exists for box, but its trait bounds were not satisfied. What is the grumpiness? So, um, Iterator is not sized. Yeah, I don't want to do clone to clone the items. I was trying to avoid that sort of copying. Um, well, that's just a stinker. 
Um, So I can clone an iterator, but I can't clone an iterator that's in a box. Um, oh, well, so much for that drink. Um, that housefly that was annoying me just left into my orange juice and died. He's doing the backstroke now. Um, I mean, can I... Can I clone? So that didn't like that at all. Um, Cause it can't clone the dying iterator. That's the problem because we've lost knowledge of what kind of iterator it is. And I don't want to use cloned because that would undo everything. Um, yeah, so that's a possibility. Um, I could also do it, I could basically do it like the closure code and make new lists every time. So if I were to collect, like, so if candidates started out being um, all the individuals, so if this started off just being self.individuals, um, I don't get too many selfs. That's why it's fussy. Um, so candidates is uh, oh that would be equals to um, and then I don't need that anymore. Probably need to say iter dot iter. So just go over everybody. And then here we'd say filter, but we'd need to collect at the end. And so now I'm just making new vectors every time. Why are you grumpy? Vec individual is not an iterator. Oh, duh. Iter. Um, now why are you grumpy? Uh, value of vec cannot be built from an iterator over references. Oh, um, oh, so that really needs to be a vector of references. Uh, and now here, can I do something like, uh, as ref no that did not work because it's got there's presumably some nifty trick that'll take a vector of 
things and give me a vector of references to things. Oh, but... Oh, and then I get like triple whammy here. That doesn't seem good. Iter plus collect would do it. Oh. So you're saying here. And it would, oh yeah, so it made the right type. But now I still got a problem here, which is, um, oh, you know, I wonder if I was going the wrong way here. I think maybe I was, because the issue here is, uh, that we're trying to build a reference from a double, reference. And I think before we were trying to build an individual from a reference. So I think I've actually kind of gone the wrong way and not solved the problem. Um, we've got, so we want, so let's go back actually to what we had. And now candidates is a vector. Iter is giving us an iterator of things. Filter gets a reference to a reference to an, because the iter gives us uh, an iterator of references and the filter gives us a double reference and uh, here. Do candidates into iter? Uh, that fixed that problem. But then this problem's grumpy. Because we have, oh, so into, so into iter takes ownership. And see, we can't do that because that would take ownership of all those individuals. Um, and set that back to a ref, oh, set this back to a reference. I'm with you. Um, and then this was iter.collect is that really the best option here it feels that feels sort of kludgy um but it does actually make everything compile that's a win um so then we would candidates would get to be the new vector um and then you go through this until you're done. And then what you're going to return is um, some candidates, you know, blah. Yeah. So that at least compiles. Um, so I'm going to uh, Rust convert vector to vector of references.
Oh, it's intercollect, just like you said. Hmm. Well, then maybe that's the way to do it. It just seems kind of kludgy, but. Hmm. Okay. Well, then. I think this. I'm a little. I've got an unwrap here that it would be nice to do something about. So the concern would be if the candidates was ever empty, then that unwrap would fail. So I think let's put an assert bang here. Uh, assert can did oh not yeah can not candidates is empty. Uh, the set of lexicase candidates shouldn't be empty. And then that unwrap should be okay. And yeah, well, let's see if it works. Um, Fingers crossed it'll do a thing. So we should have Lexicase now as an option. We go to lib. We should be able to add Lexicase as an option here. Um, population Lexicase. Um, let's see, what do I probably want? I think I'm going to say 75 for that. I'm going to get rid of random. So I'll just comment random out. And get rid of decimal. And I'll keep 20% binary tournament. So that should give me some elitism, 20% from binary tournament and 75% for Lexicase. case. Let us see what happens. Uh, fingers crossed that will do a useful thing. We'll start with count ones because it's simpler. And we got some warnings, go away warnings. Definitely seems slower. Than it used to. Uh, yeah, it's definitely slower than it was when we weren't using Lexicase. So, this l use of Lexicase is definitely costing us something. Um, which is interesting. We're still making progress. Still making progress. Uh, still making progress. Come on. So it does appear to still work. That's good. Um, I'm actually going to kill this and just for grins, I'm going to comment out all the selection except for Lexicase. Just because I want to make sure that um, uh, it wasn't working because the other selections were leading us in the right direction. 
Um, but that in fact Lex Case was moving us. Yeah, that looks like Lex Case is moving us in a direction. But Lex Case is definitely slower. Wow. Um, we are clearly spending more time doing generations than we were before. And the only thing we've changed is the selection mechanism. So Lexicase is definitely slowing things down. All that um, vector creation um, is presumably costing us something, uh, which is too bad. And your idea of, of tracking the individuals that have been used would be an alternative. Uh, uh, that's a possibility. Okay, so we finished that. Um, let me do HIF. See if we get anywhere. Um, so, could we reuse the same vector? And the idea then would be instead of assigning a new vector to the old vector here, you'd sort of go through the vector and strike out in some way the candidates that were no longer relevant. Um, What if we made a vector of options that initially was sum around every, a reference to every individual, and that when you remove somebody, you turn that sum into a none, and then the flattened stuff could go through and um, get rid of all the nuns for you uh, in an iterator form. Would that be useful? No, you just well, you 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 just map a lot, and you'd have your map ignore anything that was a nun. Um, But then you're still going to go, nothing ever gets shorter then. Like your, your computation is then going to be the number of individuals times the number of test cases. And uh, that's potentially, uh, ooh, 800. That's actually, I've never seen an 800 before now um, in running this problem with this set of tools. So this was actually, LexCase did good here. Um, it got us to, I'm guessing this is a full half of the bit string. So that's actually pretty slick. And that's generation 12. So there could be potential for more down the road, but hard to say um, 
and it's clearly running slow if we've only gotten 12 generations so far. Um... So into iter just consumes the vector, taking ownership of everything. But since the vector is a vector of references, that's OK. We're not taking ownership of the actual individuals. Um, Oh, it just feels so much slower now. Um, yeah, I mean, we've let's take all that time we were thinking we've moved ahead one generation. Um, and if we kill this and come back to lib and rid of you and bring you folks back this will be a whole lot faster yeah look how much faster that goes now if the selection operator is good enough that like you know, I don't think we're going to see 800 anytime soon. Um, and so if the selection operator is good enough to justify the extra cost, that could be worth it. But this is really a lot slower than I was expecting it to be. Um, actually, if I do this. Yeah, so that's a good question. I have never made a flame graph of um, Rust code. Maybe that's the thing to be thinking about. Um, oh, why do I keep doing that? Rust flame graph. Um, cargo flame graph. Well, that's awfully convenient. Um, Rust powered flame graph generator with additional support for cargo projects. Can be used to profile anything, not just Rust projects. No Perl or pipes required. Um, cargo install flame graph. I wonder if I've actually done this. I feel like maybe I did at some point. Um, ha ha, I did. I've actually installed Flame Graph. Now I just figure out how to use it. Um, So I can just say cargo flame graph. And then all my other things. Okay. Well, we could try that. 
Um, so now I don't want to. I don't want to run a hundred generations. Let's try just running ten. Let's let's just try five. Because presumably we'll learn whatever we need to learn in a handful of generations. And it didn't like things. Profiling without debug info. Enable simple inf information by putting that in. Well, okay, let's do that. That's in Cargo Tamil. Uh, what am I doing? I'm over here. Cargo Tamil. And that was, oops, profile.release. Um, let's do. Oh, and I'm a little behind on some things. Well, I ought to do that something about that one day. Not going to do it right now. Oh, I'm going to have to download and install some stuff anyway. Have, is it, have you ever used cargo flying ground? Do you know more about this than I do? And now my um, fans are kicking in. Hope this is not interfering with the stream. Um, okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. And it died. Dtrace. So this is a Mac thing. Oh, mm, I feel like this is something where the right or a a potential solution is just to run it as root. Oh, that was fast. That was also like. It seemed much faster than before. Let me run it for 10 generations just for grins. That's way faster. Is that because it's running in release mode instead of development mode? That some kind of optimization like made it go zippy fast because that's super weird right um if i go back to 100 generations here like in theory now look how fast that's going oh but it gets slower Oh, interesting. It does get slower. And I think that's probably because there are a lot more ties. Ah, maybe we need the tie breaking thing. So, um, let me kill this. Uh, let's, let me, whoops. Ah. Let me rerun it with just 10 and let's have a look at the flame graph because that might be useful but I think I have an idea of part of why it might be taking a long time okay um, now I have flame graph do I just need to look at open flame graph uh, what's gonna, I don't know what that's going to do on a Mac uh, oh, no, I really don't want that. Well, I guess maybe it would be okay. 
Okay, let's move. Oh, stop. I'm going to move you over so you can see what happened. So, um, so there's a lot of faffing about at the beginning. And then uh, I'm not sure how to let's zoom in because I think it's drawing this badly. And this is all piled on the top of itself. This is probably not the best way to look at this. I think maybe looking at it in the browser would be more sensible. Go away, thing. Yeah. Um, will Brave open it? Good question. Uh, Rust GIA Undraft. Hey, there we go. Much better. So Lexa case is eating up a lot of time. So Dumain Lex case is by a mile the most expensive thing. So HIF, for example, is not taking up a great deal of time um, or mutate. And Lex case is mostly doing Alec, let's see. Alec Vec in place collect. Oh, stop it. Alec Vec in place collect. Spec from enter. So 47% of the time is being spent doing that. And I assume that Alec Vec in place in place collect is something about collect having to um, allocate space to make a new vector and so our uses of collect are costing us a lot um, and that that is a significant issue notice though that you know, a good half of this seems to be just kind of in Lexicase. And then, you know, we get some little bits, shuffling, generating the range is costing us something. Shuffling is costing us 5%. Um, but this allocation here is a big piece of it and lexicase itself is 95 percent of the time so collecting to a vec is definitely hurting us um so that is here but probably more realistically here because that's happening over and over and over again um, and that's, I think, killing us. Now that we have, oh, 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 but this, oh, so there's two things that occur to me. So one is, now that we know every, we can now see if we're down to one individual. When we had an iterator, we couldn't really do that. But now that we have um, a vector, we could check and say if candidate 
dot len is one return some candidates zero. And we could just quit at that point. Or actually break might be better. Um, and then we'll just return candidate zero there. Now, I doubt that really made much difference, but I'm curious. Go, little computer, you can do it. Okay, and now back to here, reload. So that's still 40 something percent. So I don't think we, and this is still 95 and change. So that didn't really change things very much. That's not too surprising, but I thought I'd try it anyway. So the other thing that um, uh, they do, and I pulled out a simplified one here, but they, um, here, let's, um, so I don't have to, GitHub.com L Spectre Propeller um, Source uh, Selection. So their Lexa case, they actually group by errors or what we're calling scores. And then choose a ran a single random individual out of every group where everybody's got the same score. So they group everybody together by score. So this section will all have the same score. This collection will all have the same score. And then they go and take one individual at random out of each of those. Um, and that way they know there aren't any and there won't be any two individuals with exactly the same score vector. Um, at the beginning. And so it reduces the size of the population that needs to be processed um, when doing Lex case selection. And I think this might be relevant here because when we change this from 10 to, let's say, 20, um, things definitely start to slow down. And I think that's because there probably are a lot of ties. And so we're getting a large group of individuals that are passing through all the test cases. And each one of them we're comparing on every test case. So we're getting kind of the number of individuals times number of test cases because of the set of ties. Um, and so I think that may be part of what's getting us in trouble. And if we were to add this, some kind of grouping thing here, then we would pro perhaps speed things up. And I looked actually, um, do I still have like, um, here we go. I was looking at iterators and there was definitely something that would do what we wanted. Um, I thought, um, I thought there was like a D dupe. Maybe that was actually a. Well, maybe it was in iter tools. Let's make sure we're on the latest version. Um, so 
do do. Yeah, it was in here. Because I think we could do like dedupe and dedupe by. Um, so dedupe isn't what we want, but I think we could do dedupe by. That would that takes a comparison function. Was there a something with key? Because I don't really want a comparison function if I can help it. Um, duplicates. That's exactly one. Okay, not helpful. Um, so group by, I think I'd prefer dedupe to group by. Um, oh yeah, and group by requires things to be consecutive and that's not gonna be good. Um, That sorted step unique oh maybe this was it unique aha uh -huh. and unique by yeah so I could do unique by and then use the error the score vector as the by part and it would give me back an iterator over just the unique items. Now this wouldn't pick one at random, which theirs does by grouping. And I don't know if that, that might matter. Um, Cause this will probably take the first one that it finds. Yeah, it will. Um, we could shuffle the iterator first and then does this do any, is there anything here that would do shuffle? Shuffle, no. Um, well, let's try unique. Let's try the unique thing. Let's see if we can make that happen. Uh, since we don't have very long. Um, oh, so I'm going to need um, iter tools. Uh, cargo add iter tools. Iter tools, no dash. Da, 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 da. Hopefully this will not require too much compiling because we're running to the end. And I'm sure people are getting tired. Oh, this might be a long thing because it looks like this could take a little while. If this looks like it's gonna build the whole universe, then maybe we'll call it quits and I will explore this. Oh, well, okay. That wasn't that bad. Um, it just was slow at the beginning, although it hasn't compiled everything yet. Um, so we have unique. Um, so I want to call unique by and so if I turn it into an into an iterator and call unique. So in fact here I could So we are 
iterator unique by and now we're going to take an individual and we're going to return in dot scores didn't like that So it needs to take ownership of end scores. Well, I don't want you to take ownership of end scores. Can I just say reference? Oh, hey, maybe I can. Uh, we both had the same thought. Um, so now, and actually I'm going to put a, um, a print line bang. Oh, this is going to generate a huge amount of output. Um, actually, what if I say print bang um space uh candidates dot len and then down here I'll put print one bang And so the little lock, it will um, uh, let's see how much do we have. Oh, we don't have to build that much. That's good. Interesting that rayon comes in. So every selection is, so we're doing far fewer loops, it looks like, because we have 255, I think, test cases, and we're clearly not doing 255 test cases. Um, if I kill that, yeah, we're typically doing less than a screen full. But we're not stopping. We're starting with almost everybody. So we're not actually trimming things very much at the beginning. It doesn't look like. Hmm. Let me actually take the printing out and see if, what it's like just to run. Does it look like that made things go any faster or not? Uh, no. If anything, it's slower. Weird. I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's have a look at the flame graph. Uh, you're here. Reload. Oh, interesting. Well, it changed it. Uh, oh, but Lexicase is actually now nearly 100% of its CPU. 
used to be 95, and now it's 99.78. So I don't know that that helped anything. Um, and 95% of it is Alec Vac from Itter. And then it's doing a lot. So this, this is actually, I think this hash map stuff is, which is uh, 90, wow, 95%. I think this is, I think there's a hash map under the covers when we do unique buy. So I think that hash map is costing us a fortune. Um, and doesn't seem to make things go any faster. Hmm. Yeah. So building that hash map at the beginning is really costing us now we could do this once before all the selections instead of having each selection do it once because this should be the same for every selection and if that's taking up a ton of time, that could improve the situation. Uh, but we'd have to know that we were doing lots of case and store that somewhere. Not an easy way to do that. Well, foo. This has been a little disappointing. I was expecting magic. And I didn't quite get magic. Um... I do think we're getting better performance for whatever that's worth. Um, but if I bring these two guys back, um, I think that we're getting higher, sorry, better performance sounded wrong. I think we're getting higher scores than I was getting before. Um, so I do feel like Lexicase is working in an evolutionary sense, but from a just performance computational standpoint, it's a bit of a pig and that isn't awesome. Well, it's nearly nine. I say we quit. I will have to contemplate what this means, um, off in another universe, um, and see if I can make some sense out of this. Um, but, hmm. Yeah. It's a little disappointing in some ways. So Lex Case is still almost the only game in town. with little tiny bits of other things. But Lex case is killing us. Okay, so I'm gonna think about that. Okay, it is uh, nine o'clock, let's stop. Um, I will not be here Saturday for either of the normally scheduled streams. I think they've been canceled in Twitch, but um, 50th anniversary of the campus radio station um, and as the long-term advisor to the station, um, I'll be on campus meeting alums that are coming back and doing all that kind of stuff. So that'll be fun, but it means I won't be here. So no streaming on Saturday. I will be back Tuesday for the regular Tuesday morning stream. Uh, and then after that, I'll be gone on vacation for a week and a half or two weeks. Uh, so only one more stream before vacation, which will be Tuesday morning. 
So bummer about that, but you can all celebrate and do something fun with that time. Um, hopefully I'll see some of you when I get back. Um, I will post things on uh, the Discord. Um, here, let me grab that link, um, uh, which is also the, um, uh, the QR code there on the bottom left. Um, so uh, uh, feel free to join the Discord. I'll post uh, updates as to when and uh, what we're doing um, there. I'll also try to post stuff on Twitter as I know it. Um, I hope you have a wonderful uh, weekend. I hope to see at least some of you Tuesday morning, and then I hope you have an awesome middle of October. So thank you all for your help and your feedback. It is always greatly appreciated. Um, this is clearly a thing that will need to be done, dealt with, but I'll deal with it later. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.